Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us for a conversation is Bob Moriarty, the founder of 321 Gold and 321 Energy.com, and also the author of two of my personal favorite books, The Art of Peace and Nobody Knows Anything. Mr. Moriarty, welcome to the show, sir. Uh, it's very good to talk to you today, and it's very funny because those are two of my favorite books, too. <laughs> well, uh, Bob, it's always an honor to have you on our show. I would like to begin our discussion on your outlook for 2019. What are some topics of interest that we should focus on beginning with the political and economic landscape of the United States? Mm, you've got to separate those, and we can do that from an economic point of view. The trade war is a total disaster. It can only do damage. It already has done substantial damage. Uh, I, I think the everything bubble has popped and we could see some real fireworks in 2019. Uh, I, I think the stock market has either topped or will top soon. Gold and silver appear to be bottoming. Uh, platinum is the lowest relative to gold it's ever been. Uh, so I'm buying platinum and I'm buying silver literally right now. I, I think that we may have a few more weeks of uh, tax loss silly selling in, in the gold shares. But I think that resources look good for next year and everything else looks bad. Uh, politically, there, there's just no predicting... Uh, what Trump will do. Uh, every day I get up, I look, I shudder. It, it, I, I'm not sure Trump knows what he's doing, but uh, we, we were talking off mic, and one of the things that I said was everybody needs to own some gold. They need to have some some liquid cash, and they need to have a passport. The world is very precarious. Certainly, you could see from the riots in France how, how, how swiftly things can go bad. And that all has to do with government spending money they don't have and increasing taxes to pay for it. Now, the problem is governments across the globe have spent so much money that they can never tax the people enough and the people are getting very tired of, of the cost of living going up and taxes going up. And they, they know the government's at fault and they're going to start hanging politicians here very soon. And 2019 could be a lot worse than 2008 ever dreamed of. You know, speaking of that, let's let's shift the focus here a little bit and talk about it on a global context here regarding geopolitics and the world economy you somewhat reference it here but what has you concerned the most mm, trump which is which will suffice in and of itself <laughs> well he's he's he just flat not dealing with full deck now uh, to the extent that i'm glad he was elected president because hillary clinton was far worse but Donald Trump is not dealing with full deck. We have a coup d'etat in progress that's been going on for several years where the FBI and the DOJ and the CIA and the NSA are all trying to overthrow Trump. And that, that's, that's a very bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. Uh, ha have you ever been in a riot? No, sir, I have not. Well, for 20 years, I flew small airplanes all over the world, and there were a couple of times that, that I got caught up in riots because things just started getting crazy. Uh, I was in Pakistan, and the locals decided they were to start uh, breaking up all the places that sold liquor, 
And when, when a mob forms, you see people at their very worst. When the banks close, when people can no longer cash checks, when their plastic money doesn't work, uh, Americans are three meals away from chaos. And it, it's going to be bad, and I'm serious, it's a heart attack. Everybody should have a plan for getting out of Dodge. And again, that plan is, for our audience, a passport, physical precious metals, and some cash. And with, with regards to cash, uh, would it be in a particular currency? Well, yeah, I mean, whatever the local currency is, if you're Canadian, you need Canadian dollars, and if you're American, you need American dollars. Uh, here's the flaw. If the banks close and the, the U.S. dollar goes to zero, you still need dollars because that's what people are used to doing trade in. Um, I, I'm not saying you need dollars because dollars are going to be more valuable. You need dollars because that's how you conduct trade. But it, it, seriously, everybody needs a plan B. When everything goes to shit, I'm going to get out of Dodge. Moving on to issuers, who has your attention now and going forward into 2019? Okay, when you say issuers, are you talking about resource companies? Yes, sir. Uh, Miramont is absolutely one. They've gotten a drill permit. It's a Quentin Henning company. They have two world-class projects in Peru. They will start drilling in January. I expect to start seeing results in February or March. Uh, I think they will be world-class results. I think the market will recognize it. The company has gone from 13 cents 10 days ago to 26 cents now. And that gives them a market cap of about $13 million. Uh, could they be at 150 million in six months or a year? Absolutely. Uh, they've got plenty of money. They've got $6 million in the bank, so there's no risk whatsoever of them going out and doing a big financing. And, and I expect to see solid, good results in the next uh, two to three months. The second company would be Irving. Same story there. Uh, you and I were at Irving, okay? We looked at $25,000 a ton rock. We looked at the center. They will start drilling the center in January, and you can expect to see results six weeks, two months later. And, you know, when you drill through $25,000 rock, you know, you get a meter or two, and so you're going to have a stock that's explosive. It was a dollar ten a share two weeks ago, and it's a dollar eighty right now, and it's still cheap. How about Nova Resources? That's one of our favorites as well. Who? Nova Resources. I never heard of them. <laughs> Now, I, 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 I'm going to be a little bit cagey here. I mean, that's, that's, that's a terrible thing for me to say. Uh, <laughs> Novo is literally having their AGM as you're doing this recording. And, and I don't want to say anything about Novo until I hear the results of the AGM. But I was there a month ago. They, they've got an extraordinary future ahead of them. Uh, good management. Tons of money in the bank. Quentin Henney is an absolute genius. Uh, everybody hates the stock now. And how many times do I need to say you need to buy things when everybody hates them and you need to sell them when everybody loves them? And you got all these people at the chat boards whining and crying. Oh, my God, no votes at a new low. And, and I'm thinking... Why do they not see that as an opportunity? Uh, platinum hit $790 an ounce today. 
Why would you whine about that? That's an opportunity. My God, it has been $790 an ounce in many, many years. It is so cheap. Buy stuff when it's cheap. Sell it when it's expensive. It is not complicated. And you know, you'll learn that in a book written by Bob Moriarty entitled Nobody Knows Anything. Bob, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, before we leave here, full disclosure, Marymount Resources, Irving Resources, and Nova Resources, all three are sponsors of both 321 Gold and Proven Improbable. And by the way, uh, unbeknownst to you, Bob, I will be interviewing uh, Mr. Pincus uh, this coming Friday. Uh, good. That's going to be a must listen to. I talked to him a to him a few days ago, I was nibbling at the shares at 13 and 14 cents, and obviously word was getting out because the stock literally has doubled in 10 days. They have a, a brilliant future ahead of them. Uh, Peru can be a difficult country to deal with. Bill has had it totally under control. They should have been drilling six months ago, and they didn't, and it's no big deal, and they will be drilling shortly. Move, moving on to physical precious metals. You wrote a piece recently, which is a must-read, entitled, These 113 Analysts Believe Gold Will Go Parabolic to 3,000 or More. What compelled you to write this piece, and why now? Well, here's what's very funny. I didn't write the piece. Uh, the piece came out in 2011, okay? Now, I had been contacted in 2011, and the woman who wrote the piece wanted to know my prediction for gold. And I said, well, I'll be happy to give you a prediction for gold. Tell me what the dollar is going to be. And she said, well, I have no idea what it's going to be. And I said, well, how can I tell you what gold's going to be if you can't tell me what the dollar is going to be? Because gold is the inverse of the dollar. Now, we forget this, and, and we shouldn't because it's so, so basic. Anytime you're talking about the price of any commodity, you're talking about the commodity, and you're talking about the currency it's quoted in. Now, the funny thing is gold had been up 12 years in a row. And everybody in the industry wanted to come out with an outrageous price. Now, the fact of the matter is, if, if, if you want to predict accurately, uh, do you happen to know what the price of copper is today? $2.85 per pound. Okay. Now, from a mathematical point of view, if you wanted to predict the price six months from now, from a mathematical point of view, what price should you predict? Because everything mm -hmm. has to do with probability and permutations. Mm -hmm. If you know the price of copper is $2.85 today, and you want to predict the price for six months from now, mathematically speaking, ignore your, your opinion. Mathematically speaking, what price should you predict? Two dollars and eighty-five cents, and that being because everything goes up, we know that, and everything goes down. Okay, and the fact of the matter is, all prices wobble up and down, and we forget that because we think I really like gold, I really like silver, I really like platinum. Therefore, it should go up every single day. Well, markets don't work that way. Well, if it doesn't go up every single day, it's proof somebody's manipulating it. Well, actually everything's manipulated, so it's not proof of anything. But from a mathematical point of view, the price should be what it is now, okay? What we forget that all of this variation in price has nothing to do with the commodity and everything to do with the value of the dollar. Mm -hmm. okay, when you start throwing in inflation, okay, the value of the dollar changes every single day. Between noon today and noon tomorrow, the value of the U.S. dollar will change 10,000 times. 
Now, that's actually insane from an economist's point of view. If you were a Martian and you came to Earth and you found out the currency changed its value 10,000 times in a day, the Martian would say, you know, you guys are all nuts down here. And he would be <laughs> correct. But in, in, in 2011, everybody had watched gold go up 12 years in a row, so they thought, well, Mathematically, if it's gone up 12 years in a row, that means it's going to go up another 12 years in a row. And they forgot things go up and things go down. So, I mean, it's very funny because you look at those predictions seven years later, and we've got 1,200 and something gold, and you realize that the people were being silly in their predictions. There are no experts and there are no gurus, period. But Bob, there is a way to navigate and make the value proposition actually work better for you. And I want to ask you this here. So regarding physical precious metals, okay. can, can you share with us, and you already have, but tell us why. What are you buying right now? You're not buying gold. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I sold gold here recently. Uh, this goes back to my basic thesis, and it's the heart of the book, and it's very important to understand. You buy things when they're cheap, and you sell them more than when they're expensive. Now, the ratio of, of silver and gold has varied from about 16 to 1 to 101 to 1 over the last 100 years. For 50 of those years, the price of, of gold was fixed, and for 50 of those years, the price of gold and silver was variable. So... Uh, that that should give you a good idea of the range. Now, the average over the last hundred years has been fifty-four to one. So, uh, silver has has gotten very cheap, as it has literally in the last week, where it was eighty-six to one. And uh, you go back two thousand eleven, it got down to about thirty-two to one, where silver was very expensive. Everybody makes investing way too complicated because the first mistake they make is they listen to people who feed their fantasies, okay? Would you vote for an honest politician? My answer is I would. If you voted for an honest politician, how many votes would he get in total? If, it sounds like it's probably just be myself. <laughs> yeah, he would, he would get one vote. Okay. Politicians, television preachers, and most financial analysts make their money, get their power by feeding people's fantasies. They tell people what they want to hear. And you're always comfortable, you know, if you've got a certain belief set, you know, if you believe that Catholics are horrible people, you want to go into a Baptist church and listen to them talk about Catholics. If, if you think Muslims are horrible people, you want to go into a Catholic church and have them talk about Muslims. Uh, we have prejudices, we have biases, and we listen to those people who feed those biases. I mean, I listen to TV preachers, and I'm sitting there thinking, how the hell could anybody listen to that unadulterated horseshit and send their money to these fools? But the fools are the people in the audience throwing $100 bills at people for telling them what they want to hear. And when you look at the state of politics in the United States, my God, it's embarrassing. I mean, I, I can tell you, because I spend a lot of time outside the United States, the rest of the world is looking at the American political system saying, you know, those people have gone off the deep end. They're all crazy. And they would be right. You know, it's very important for our audience to understand here is, again, you didn't say that silver is going to a certain numerical value. You just looked at the ratios between that in gold. Completely different perspective. Uh, I can share prior to me entering the public domain, uh, I would listen to someone that would feed my my paradigm that silver is, is being manipulated at the time. This is me 10 years ago entering the, the precious metals industry and that uh, silver is going to hit 
this parabolical number of 150 to 200 dollars any day now because of the federal reserve and that was my reasoning for purchasing physical silver and then i had the opportunity to be introduced to the likes of your work and i shifted that paradigm and took a more responsible approach and i and i appreciate you so much sharing that that's a it's a a lesson that we all can learn from and again to learn more about lessons like that the book that you were referring to is nobody knows anything but it, it's as simple as you should buy what's cheap and you should sell what's dear right now silver's cheap gold's expensive now, I, I'm not predicting $50,000 silver. I'm not predicting $200 gold. I'm not predicting anything. I'm taking facts, okay? The ratio has been 16 to 1 to 101 to 1 over 100 years. That should be the parameters. The average has been 54 to 1. Silver has spent less than 1% of the time over the last 100 years above 86 to 1. So from a mathematical point of view, and all, all investing is based on mathematics at its heart, from a mathematical point of view, the chances of your profiting by buying silver and selling gold is 99%. And those are good odds. Now, do I give a damn if silver goes down tomorrow? No. Okay. Same thing with platinum. My God, platinum's the cheapest relative to gold. It's ever been in history. Uh, yesterday it was four hundred and forty dollars an ounce cheaper than gold. Yet for most of history, since it was discovered in the eighteenth century, platinum's had a premium to gold. So buy platinum and sit. You know, that's exactly what we're doing. We're purchasing very aggressively both of those metals. May I ask you this as well? When you're sure. looking at uh, buying your silver, do you like the, the you, are you looking at 100 ounce bars? Do you like government minted coins? Do you like rounds, junk silver? Tell us what you're buying. It, it's funny you say that. Uh, I, I am cheap, okay? Silver is silver is silver. And somebody contacted me, and he had a good deal at 100 ounce bars. So I, I bought 100 ounce bars, but I, I would buy whatever is cheap. It's all the same silver. Much agreed. I know some people have a certain perspective on getting government minted coins versus rounds, which is a private mint, minted coins. And I didn't know if you had a particular interest in either one of those two. Uh, it, it's probably a good idea to have a, a, a variation. Okay, uh, you can buy a tank of gas with a one ounce silver coin, but you can't buy a tank of gas with a hundred ounce silver bar. True indeed. <laughs> Bob, let's shift our focus a little bit on something you and I both like to discuss as well. And let's compare precious metals now with uh, a, a different type of coin, Bitcoin, which oh, has... <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you mispronounced that word. I certainly did. I'll uh, please share with the audience. What is the appropriate name for this? Bitcoin. <laughs> and how rare is Bitcoin, by the way? Mm, how rare is salt water in the ocean? <laughs> well, I would say there's a number of variations. Uh, could you share with us how many variations are there of Bitcoin? Twenty-five hundred thirteen, roughly. And isn't that part of one of the big marketing aspects of uh, Bitcoin is that it's supposed to be rare? That's not rare. You can't have 2,513 of the damn things and have it rare. A year ago, we had you on our show, and I believe at that time, we were looking at a thirteen dollars to $14,000 price, uh, in U.S. currency that is, on Bitcoin. And today we're looking at uh, 3,800. Is that correct? Uh, somewhere in there, yeah. And your analysis at that time was it was going to go to its intrinsic value of zero. So it appears to be heading that direction. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question because actually, and this actually, we're lower than that. We're at 3,714 dollars and 11 cents, roughly. Uh, if people would take the knowledge that they have 
and their common sense and some logic, they wouldn't need to listen to experts. They wouldn't need to listen to gurus. What is the value of, of a 99 cent stuffed toy? At the current market price, then it would be 99 cents. Okay. What is the value of a Beanie Baby? Assuming that is the same toy that you're referring to, then I would say 99 cents. Okay. Now, everything eventually returns to its real value. Uh, Beanie Babies were going for thousands of dollars because supposedly they were rare. And it was this, you know, everybody wanted to jump in and everybody wanted to collect and they thought they were valuable because they were rare. They were 99 cent stuffed toys. And, we and that's collected all them. they were. We collected them. <laughs> and introducing into the conversation, Bob, who do you have there with you? Oh, that's my wife, <laughs> and Mr. Brown, <laughs> her pet stuffed sheep. And is, is, is Mr. Brown, is he valued at 99 cents as well? Uh, he, he's, he's valued a lot higher than that. <laughs> it's choice to get rid of me or get rid of her it's like, or him. It's like no choice at all. <laughs> but uh, let's go back to, to Bitcoin and, and Beanie Babies. Which of those has value? Assuming for a child, they have some type of intrinsic value, but to someone purchasing it, I guess the current market price. Well, the, the, no, no. Current market price could be absolutely incorrect. Okay. That's correct because the value at one time was significantly higher. Yeah. Yeah, so you uh, make a good point there. The, the strange thing is, you know, when Beanie Babies were selling for thousands of dollars, it was because they were mispriced because everybody was chasing the the uh, fear of missing out. You know, you got to have Beanie Babies. Uh the key here is, at, at the very worst, a Beanie Baby is still a 79 cent or 89 cent or 99 cent toy. So let's take that over to Bitcoin and the 50, 2513 variations. What real value do they have? What, what intrinsic value is there there? I don't see one. Well, yeah, I see one. I know exactly what the real value is. And what is you that, sir? Do it if you think about it. All right. Please share with us, sir. Zero. <laughs> oh, that was my point. <laughs> yeah, but you said you didn't see it. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't see it, and I was referring to, in, uh, I should have, in, it was, I was inferring, I should say, to zero. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, here's what's daft. And I, I went through and I reread some of what I was saying. I did a bunch of interviews in December because I was totally convinced it was at the top. I saw every measure that you would use to call the top of a bubble in December. But there were only 1,300 or 1,400 variations of Bitcoin a year ago. Mm -hmm. That's almost doubled yet the price of Bitcoin has gone from 20000 to 3700 It's gone down to over 80%, but is there anything preventing it from going to zero? And actually the only thing preventing it is the number of fools in the world who still believe there's some value there. There is no value there. There is nothing now there was nothing a year ago, and there was going to be nothing 10 years from now. It doesn't have the, the value of a Beanie Baby. And it's an electronic Beanie Baby made, made of, of bits and bytes of no particular value. And the mere fact that it's the biggest uh, bubble in world history, okay, should tell you something. But over 700 billion dollars disappeared into Bitcoin heaven. You know, it's important to note, and you, you 
as you were speaking here, I'm thinking BitCon, and a con artist tries to emulate and fool. When I look at every image I ever see of BitCon, they make it look like a gold coin. They well, also they make it look like a coin, and the funny thing is, there weren't any coins. There wasn't at, anything. Absolutely, and then they also use uh, mining terms, like you're, you're mining Bitcoin, and right. that's what right. that's what an imposter does. An imposter, as you as we're referencing appropriately here, BitCon. Uh, the name yeah. fits very well. Yeah, but it, it, here's what's really funny. There, there were two arguments. One is that it's it's some kind of electronic money, which it's not, and the other is that it's rare, and it, it's certainly not rare. Now, 2,513 variations of it. Uh, people are starting to wake up, but it has been fraud from the get-go, it was a bubble. Uh, the current bubble right now is marijuana. And, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll go you one better. And, and you're going to have to guess at the answer here. What's going to be the big bubble in 2019 or 2020 and 2021? Big bubble. You're putting me on the spot here. Damn straight, uh, I am. Let me let me ask you this then: Can is it? Are we referring to a natural resource here by chance? Yep. For some reason, my initial instinct is saying lithium. Nope, nope, nope. It's All already right. been in a bubble. All right. If nope. not lithium, a bubbles that is absolutely the equivalent of Bitcoin and marijuana. We're going to have a bubble that's just going to go sky high. Everybody's going to jump into. Everybody's going to think it's the greatest thing in the world. Everybody's going to buy it, and they're going to drive the price up right to the roof. What is it? Then it, if it's not lithium, how about vanadium? How about gold? Gold. Interesting. Not a, not a response. I was thinking more from the base metal side here. Okay. No, no. Here's what's crazy. Can you name a commodity that is incapable of going in a bubble? No, sir. We've had stock market bubbles. We've had real estate market bubbles. We've had Bitcoin bubbles. We've had marijuana bubbles. We had a silver bubble in, in 1980. Uh, gold is going to have a bubble, period. But the purpose for me writing the book was to allow people to learn that they're capable of thinking for themselves, there is going to come a time when gold's expensive, silver's expensive, platinum's expensive, palladium's expensive, rhodium's expensive, and what do you do when they all get expensive? You should sell. You better sell. <laughs> Bob, as always, thank you for sharing your insights. Last question. What did I forget to ask? You forgot to ask me about the book. Absolutely. What can you share with us? What book? What book? The book on how to invest in natural resource companies. I think that's a great idea. I think somebody really needs to dig in, get to work, and start <laughs> writing that book. Can you give us an update on that person who might be writing that book? Uh, you're coming in really broken. I mean, I don't know <laughs> you. Bob, you got to fill us in here. You, uh, you've, you've shared with us over a year ago that uh, you will be writing a book, and uh, a number of speculators I, I, have I been waiting. See your, I can see your lips move, but I can't hear <laughs> anything you're saying. For our audience members, he's pulling my leg here and pulling your leg as well. I, I have all the intentions of the world. I've started the book. I will do it. And, and you want to leave it at that? <laughs> <laughs> How about for 2019? Is that on the outlook there? Is that something on the horizon? Uh, yeah. that? Yeah. 2019 is good. It gives me a lot of time to come up with new excuses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, before we leave here, I referenced Bob Moriarty's two books, The Art of Peace and Nobody Knows Anything. You can order your copy under our education tab, 
Proven Improbable does not receive any financial consideration for selling or advertising, but we see these books as a must-have for your library. We've benefited financially from applying the axioms in the book. Bob, for someone listening who wants to get more information on your work, please share the websites. Uh, 321 Gold and 321 Energy. They're free sites and, and they are valuable. And if you're looking to sell or buy physical precious metals, we welcome a conversation. Please email me at maurice at milesfranklin.com or call me directly at 919-274-5680. And last but not least, please visit our website, provenimprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenimprobable.com. Bob Moriarty of 321gold and 321energy.com. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.